Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and we are back for another day in London. So yesterday we went to Stonehenge and a show um, and I'm going to be uploading kind of daily vlogs that show you what we're doing. But if you want to check out the Stonehenge excursion, I'll link that below. Today, mom is very excited. I talked her into going to the Harry Potter Warner Brothers studio tour. Um, so that is literally like one of the top things I'm excited about. Don't know about y'all. We did walk the very first day we were here. We had kind of a free day to relax because we got in at seven in the morning, which was one o'clock back home. So we didn't want to like book a lot of stuff that was busy. So we just walked around and we ended up at King's Cross Station and the Platform 9 and 3 quarters store. So today, Harry Potter World, very excited. We are, of course, at our hotel. Let's see if y'all can see it. the Royal National Hotel. We're kind of central London, I would say. Um, we did take um, the bus yesterday, the, the double-decker bus. Unfortunately, the metro is on strike right now, so we can't take the metro, which is what we usually do when we're in these bigger cities. So today we're gonna call an Uber over to Evan Evans, which is the same tour company through Viator we did Stonehenge on yesterday, and then we are going to Harry Potter. So bring y'all with us. Let's go. So mom said our Uber is going to be a Tesla. Have you ever been in a Tesla, mom? I have not. I don't think I have either. Excited. Everyone's very excited about the Teslas these days. What do you feel about electric cars, mom? Eh, it's okay. <laughs> they are here. Um, I think they're here. I think that's them. All right, let's go, y'all. We're back at Evans Evans. We're gonna go inside and get our tickets. And then I think we have a couple minutes to wait. We'll find out. Okay, we got here at 1044 and they literally loaded us right on the bus. Um, somehow I got out front of line just because they just checked me in, so I'm on the bus. Mom went to the bathroom, so hopefully she'll find me. <laughs> um, it's a slightly different bus from the Stonehenge one we did yesterday, but they both say Evan Evans on the side, which is nice when you're trying to identify it in the middle of a large parking lot. But we're going to go and uh, see how far of a drive it is.
All right, we made it. We're here. You can see Evan Evans bus in the background. They gave us our tickets. So we are going to go make our way inside and uh, see what it's all about. <laughs> all right, so we just came in. There was a little security checkpoint and you can get an audio tour. And then it starts. So we've got kind of, I think, a little cafe, big dragon, breaking out of Gringotts, I'm sure. Looks like the gift shop's that way. Food hall, all kinds of fun stuff. This guy is huge. All right, let's see where we're going. Oh, we've got a fantastic this is the beginning of the tour and it's got a lot of the screenplay on it. Interesting. There are definitely a few people here. And in the next room, and it looks like this room is showing you all the different poster designs that were possible. So of course there's the ones we had and then there's a few other ones. It's kind of interesting what it would have looked like if they'd gone with some of these other options. Oh, there you go. So, United Kingdom. The other ones are from other countries. That's interesting. Also, tell you that one of these posters does actually contain a snake. I'm not going to tell you which one it is just yet. I'll let you guys have a look around, see if you can spot it. And if anyone can successfully point the mistake out to me, I'll give you five points to the house of your choice. <laughs> Well, Mom, can you find it? <laughs> Poster, body was unavailable. They used their body double as a standing, and they completely forgot in post production to edit the body double out and put body right in instead. So the poster went out like that with the mistake in, as you can see. The real body right. It also appears, and that one at the top just there, just behind Ron, you have exactly the same body double. Now that chair tells me you will be going through in about two minutes, so if everyone's ready, we'll move you through. Oh, so he was saying that this is obviously not body right, that is for body double. And they forgot when they produced it that they didn't have the real actress in there. Funny. That is funny. So he said it's almost, what, two minutes and then we'll be going into the rest of the tour. So I guess this was just kind of a, kind of the beginning holding part of the tour, and then we'll go into the actual sets, I believe. Through the doors. All the way up to about here. Welcome, you've made it to the tour. Congratulations, keep on coming, keep on coming. Stop. <laughs> Excellent, so long as you can see one of these three screens, you should be all right, don't get too close, you don't be doing this. Excellent. Keep on making your way inside, everyone. Fill the space, spread out. Haven't been here for too long. Wonderful. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Excellent. Good to see all you guys. Okay, while well, the last people come on in, let's get started. Here we go. Excellent. 
uh, one of my favourite mo uh, moments about the Harry Potter films is the bit where Harry gets to write Buck Beak off in a lesson. It's sort of like a break in the films where he just gets a chance to just be a kid again, which is what everyone really wants to do, really. My, my favourite Harry Potter prop has got to be the deluminator that Dumbledore leaves Ron. I just think it's awesome. <laughs> like the effect they have when the little ball of light comes out of the top. I just think that's wicked. It looks amazing on screen. My favourite animal is the big spider. My favourite creature in the Harry Potter films would be the basilisk. I'm a big fan of snakes and a giant one. Oof, that scares me. Um, my mum made me this sweater um, in the style of the Weasleys making Harry his first Christmas present um, and it took a, re like, a really long time to make. <laughs> I think everyone has to love the House of Gryffindor, really. Um, that's where Harry is first. Okay, we got there eventually. Hello everyone and welcome to the Warner Bros. Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. My name's Harris, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today, especially during our Mandrakes and Magical Creatures feature, which means something very exciting additions uh, to our tour today, so keep an eye out for those. And in a few minutes, you can head through these doors into our very own Studio Tour Cinema. When you do, please head down to the ends of those rows. Don't stop in the middle, leave no seat unsat. Uh, make sure we fill the space, because we've got to make sure everyone can get a seat. That'd be excellent. Um, when you're on the tour later on, we do have some flashing light smoke effects. If you have any problem with those at all, do let us know. And speaking of us, we are called Interactors. So anyone dressed just like me in this lovely blue and black, uh, we are Interactors, which is just a funny way of saying professional Harry Potter nerd. Yeah, we, we know everything there is to know about Harry Potter in theory, so please do test us, uh, ask for some fun facts, secrets, questions, trivia, um, anything you want to know about Harry Potter, the making of the films, or uh, indeed of the world of the books, please do ask us. Even if it's just where's the loo, we're here to make sure you have the best possible day. Ah, here are some of them now, some helpful tips for the tour. On behalf of the entire team, we'd like to welcome you to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London and share a few tips to ensure the best possible experience for everyone. First, please take this moment to switch your mobiles to silent before entering the cinema. Yeah, that's right. I'm back at Leavesden. I love it here. Come on. She just said to silence your phone. I thought that was just in the cinema room. Actually, we asked you to silence your mobiles in this room as well. Oh, sorry. I've got to go. Everyone, please allow me to introduce James and Oliver Phelps. Yeah, but he's not James. I am. Honestly, Evie. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't no worry. It happens all the time. Hi everybody, I'm James Phelps. Wait, you just said that. And I'm Oliver Phelps, and we're here to give you the real tips for the tour. What do you mean? Well, what you see today are the real sets, the real props, the real costumes, and the real actors used in the filming. There are no real actors in the tour, but yes, everything else is real. So please, remain behind the barriers, and please don't touch anything. While the characters we played weren't necessarily keen on the rules, like you, we're also fans of the Harry Potter films. And we hope you'll help us to preserve the amazing collection that brought these films to life. Please, don't touch that. James, we just said not to touch anything. I thought I saw some butterbeer in there. Ooh, butterbeer. Food and drinks are available for purchase about halfway through the tour, which brings up another point. The tour is larger than some people think. Yes, look how big this map is. Where's the bar? Yeah. There were two sound stages, J and K, which could take upwards of three hours to explore. Roughly halfway through the tour is the Backlot Cafe, and it's a great spot for a break. Let's be prepared. You never know when it's going to rain. Or you could just use our covered walkway. The Backlot Cafe also offers a wide range of food and beverages, like butterbeer. One last thing, please refrain from taking photos in the cinema and the green screen broomstick interactive. But please, take as many photos as you like everywhere else on the tour. And remember to share them with us using the handle hashtag WBTourLondon. And now I'd like to share with you how a magical story took over the world. Look, magic. I love to read, and when I moved back in 96, I decided to make books a central part of what I did. I had three shelves in my office. I had priority, medium priority, and low priority. 
and that Tanya Sagatchin, who was my head of development, wrote an article in a literary publication about an upcoming book. The article said that it was a book that was going to be written about a little boy who discovers he's a wizard and goes to wizard school. She got that book in and it sat firmly on the bottom shelf. Every Friday we were all given a bunch of stuff to read depending on what had come in. And as the sort of lowest rung of the office, I was, I guess, got the stuff that nobody else really wanted to read. <laughs> and when, one Monday, I asked if anybody had read anything good, and Nisha said, well, yes. David had never seen me so excited about anything ever before. So I took the book home. I read it in one sitting. I loved it. The first person I had any contact with was David Heyman. So Heyday Productions um, were the people who liked the book and saw potential in it for movies. I felt for the first time I was speaking to someone who really wanted the same things that I did out of a film adaptation. We went from handling a little known children's book to number one, number two and number three of the New York Times bestseller list. When I optioned the book I thought it might be a nice modestly sized British film. I had no idea that it would become the phenomenon that it did. None of us were expecting the sort of Beatlemania type hysteria that had just happened. It was the fans. It was the fans who propelled those films. To all you Harry Potter fans, the tour ahead was really created for you. On behalf of everyone who worked on the films, thank you. We hope you have as much fun on this tour as we did making the movies. Please enjoy. There we go, head on through these doors into our studio tour cinema. Prem to fill all of those seats. And of course, have a wonderful day. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello and Please feel free to choose any road that is in front of you, but don't stop in the middle. Do not stop in the middle. Keep coming right the way to where I'm waving at you. Absolutely marvellous. This just means that we can get you all in, and it means that nobody has to tread over anyone's toes to get to a seat. So do, do keep coming on down towards me. I promise I don't bite. I'm very nice. I'm a Hufflepuff. Unlike some of the creatures that you will be seeing today, just beware of those hands and ears. Now we've got loads of space here on the front row. Come on down, everybody. Absolutely marvellous. All right, I'm going to sign off since so. we can't film this part. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to the great hall. Please one of the first and largest sets ever to be constructed yeah. for the series. And today, we've got a wonderful frog choir at the top. We'll talk more about that in just a second. Now, this entire set stood for more than 10 years on a neighbouring soundstage across the road for the purposes of filming, and then it was moved over here, piece by very precious piece, for the purposes of the tour. Come all the way in, folks, as quickly as you can. Don't stop in the doorway. We can fit 450 cast and crew members in here simultaneously, which apparently amounts to 22 double decker buses, although uh, don't ask us how we found that out. <clears throat> now, as you continue to come in, please note that you can now take as many photographs as you wish. Go Colin Creamy crazy, snap away, snap away, snap away all. I'll meet you in front of the fireplace. Do keep moving in, folks. We need to get those doors shut. Now, everybody, as you continue to look around the room and take those photographs, I'd like to direct your gaze upwards. You will see we have no ceiling. Now, the great wall ceiling was enchanted. It'd be a little bit tricky to get clouds and stars in here. Those were magically added, but using a computer. However, you will see the absolutely gorgeous ceiling model around the corner in just a moment's time. But, as for the floor, give the floor a good hard stamp, please, the stamp. Now that is real York flagstone, which you would find in any castle up and down the UK. It was decided during production on the very first film that Asses Floor would endure a lot of wear and tear using real stone would be the best way to make it last. Indeed, it survived some truly tremendous scenes in the series. You can forget the way that the West Pearl came bursting through the Great Wall doors, shattered by the troll of the dungeon, or even better, the sorting ceremony. Now, talking of sorting, we have the four Hogwarts houses scattered around the room. We have the yellow and black of the Fable Hufflepuff. We have the silver and green of the Sly Slimmering. 
further down we have the grey and the blue of the wise rain of war, and then of course we have the red and the gold, the house of our heroes, the one of the only Gryffindor. Now the house of many fine witches and wizards, including Neville Longbottom, Ron Weasley, and Mr. Harry Potter himself. Now, this particular set of robes at the end here is a firm favourite of many of us on tour. This is in fact the very first set of robes that Dan Bradman was given to play Harry when he was just 11 years old. Complete with teeny tiny Gryffindor tie and teeny tiny Gryffindor hat. Aww. But now folks, if you'd like to join me up at the top, um, I'm sure you remember I mentioned our frog choir earlier. Now cast your mind back to the prisoner of Azkaban when Harry's third year is hailed in style for the production from this lovely choir conducted by Professor Flitwick who had a rather magical makeover during the summer. Now, this was a real choir and they were put in uniforms and they were also given real frogs to handle. Now these were actually created by the Creatures Workshop, which you'll come across later. So, given a lovely froggy texture made of silicon and just puppets, just puppets to operate. And they are very heavy, so asking for children to hold them while performing will be a bit too much. So members of the crew hid behind them and amongst them, and it was they who puppeteered the frogs on the night. The children pretended to hold them, but in fact it was members of the crew, and altogether they were able to give a rousing performance of double, double toil and trouble. Show business, am I right? <laughs> so folks, the time in the great hall is now coming to an end. A few things before you go. For everyone here who's on a City Wonders tour, that's people with City Wonders stickers, your tour guides are waiting, Fraser is over there by the fireplace. If anyone is, is on Paolo's tour, he's down at the far end. So Fraser is by the fireplace. Anyone on Paolo's tour, is, he's down at the end right now. Those are only City Wonders. For the rest of you, if anyone's using a green audio digital guide today, your tour begins around the next corner with the number one in the circle on the director's board. Follow the numbers round and you can't go far wrong. If anyone, primarily the children, are using little blue passports today, there are 16 golden stitches for you to find and seven stamp locations. The first stitch of the 16 can be found from the paint from the archway to exit the Great Hall, and the first stamp of the seven can be found in the Gryffindor area later on. If anyone is hungry, the Backlot Cafe can be found halfway through the tour, but one of only a few places in the whole world to serve butter beer and butter beer ice cream, so take advantage of you for time. And last but not least, if anyone has any problems, questions, queries, come speak to anybody dressed like me, not this guy, me, we're interactors, we like to talk to all things Hogwarts. But now, I leave you to take your final photographs and then start heading through the archways, continue your tour behind the scenes of the most magical film series in the world. Thank you very much, have a wonderful day here at Warner Brothers Studio Tour London. Thank you. Alright, we're gonna go that away. Alright, y'all, so through the doors, you can see a golden snitch. And then we're going to come into a bunch of different sets. Look, there's the staircase. I'll, I'll bring you along and show you a few things, but it's a three hour tour, so we can't do every single second. That would take three hours. <laughs> These are a lot of the directors and producers, it looks like. Oh, look at the big tapestry back there. Dumbledore's. And the floating candles. Oh goodness. How pretty. 
pretty the outfits are. I wonder if they have to have her mannequin specially made. <laughs> Look at the desserts. That's impressive. Would you make a chocolate swan like that? That's a phoenix, I bet. Ron, that's Ron's outfit. And I think that's what Fleur Delacour is next to him. And then Harry, Cho, Hermione. Victor Crumb down the other end. Hair and makeup. Furs costume. Oh, look at Luna's wig. Huh? Luna Lovegood. Oh, that new wigs? Yeah. Fred and George. Dean Thomas. Hermione Granger. Seems like a lot of these would be very itchy to wear for a long period of time. I don't think all of them did, but some of them did. Like, Fred and George weren't actually redheads. Things like that. Some, sometimes they did. Oh, man, that's a big cauldron. Oh. All right, y'all, I'll be back in a little bit. Here we are in the Gryffindor common room. The beds look so small, like... I imagine an 11 year old could fit in there, but maybe not a fully grown adult. Four beds, four boys. And they've got all the little things on their dressers. There's DT, Dean Thomas. Harry Potter, Mr. Ron Weasley himself. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Look how little they were. All the all the sets and furniture and everything just look so small. There's the staircase. Look, Harry and Ron's sweaters up there. It's funny. Neville with his cactus. Yeah, this is the Gryffindor common room. You can see on the fireplace is the Gryffindor crest, and on the other one was the Slytherin crest. You recognize Fox, the Phoenix?
So much detail to everything. They do have an interactive green screen broom writing experience. It's pretty fun. I just did it. I bought a few things. Why not? I lost mom now. All right. Mom is hoping that we are almost at the halfway point where the cafe is. Man, that's much bigger than I thought it was. Hagrid's motorcycle is small compared to the bank vault thing. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I think one is... Not sure. Yeah, so they're different versions so that they can show that Hagrid was on one and then the actual actors fit in the other ones. <laughs> they must have merged them somehow to make it look like one piece. And you can see that they're the same design, just one's big and one's little. That's funny. Got the... Swamping Willow. So much more aggressive in the movies. <laughs> Still pretty cool. Oh goodness. 
And we've got the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, we've got the stacking trunk. We're going to go look at a few things over here now. Are you knitting a scarf, Mom? You're very good at knitting. Is it the first scarf you've ever made? Odd so. Forbidden Forest. Look how big the gates are. It's got the Black Family Tapestry. It is huge. I mean, you can see the size of just the mannequins. It's ridiculously big. We've got a Seen from from the end and the fireplaces at the Ministry of Magic and Mom sitting on a bench. She is ready for a break. You want to go that way? Do we have to go through the forest to get out? Oh, there's Buckbeak. He's still animated. Oh. And into the forest. Look at all the like tree limbs and everything. Definitely spooky and dark in here. Ooh, spider webs. I know what that means. Oh man. Like you can see some. Huge. Do you like them, Mom? Oh, they are quite spooky, that's for sure. Patronus. Casting a Patronus is no easy feat. It takes a skilled wizard in the world of Harry Potter and an entire visual effects department in the real world. 
Part of their effort included the creation of a custom LED lit vest designed to be worn by a real-life Scottish deer hound to create the glow of the Patronus in a natural environment. In post-production, the visual effects department composited the digital Patronuses with the practical lighting effects, creating a magical and very believable effect. He's very bright. This is how you turn them on. Oh. Right. Hand painted forest. Building a forest. Oh, I think we might have reached the halfway point. Replicating the original. All right, so now we are at a gift shop. Tour continues this way. All right, let's see what we can see. Oh, well, we're about to the platform. All right, y'all. Mom and I are going to look around the shop. We'll be back. Okay, so that gift shop had special merchandise that you can only buy in that shop, not in the regular shop. And now we are coming to the train station. Platform nine and three quarters. This train is huge. All right, y'all, so we are on the train. It's a very long line to get on. You can see all the different compartments. <laughs> so this, they said this is the actual train they use, but they've redressed everything for the tour. Little. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, 2004. Look how dark it is. Alright, now we're at Goblet of Fire. Interesting. Order of Phoenix. Oh, look at all the, all the snacks. <laughs> That's fun. All right, we got a little break for a door. Half blood prints. Got the quibbler now. All the parcels and packages. I think we've got maybe a couple yeah. more. Oh, Ron and Lavender. <laughs> Deathly Hollows. Got a little wrapped cauldron. Right here. And last but not least, all right, made it through the whole train. There's a little compartment here. I'll put some pictures. And now we're going to, I believe, come through to the cafe where mom's waiting. So, oh man, look at this. They've got a whole display of sweets and candies and books and all kinds of fun stuff. I'm telling you though, I need a break. So I'm very glad they put this cafe halfway through. Sit down, Pat. So we're gonna leave the Backlot Cafe 
and go out to the back lot. So this is some of the outdoor sets, I guess, starting with the burrow and Pivot Drive, the night bus, got the tunnel. We got lots of stuff out here. This is so little. Look at the little bathtub and the little stained glass. Um, should be the burrow. So this is the, the Weasley's house with all the kids and they just kept adding on rooms every time they had a kid. And it's all held together with magic. But the actual house would be very, very tall and unable to be built in real life. So I believe for full shots, they built the miniature. Hmm. There's a line at Pivot Drive. I wonder what that's for. Oh, look at the greenhouse, Mom. Lines everywhere. Staple of any good attraction. All right, so in the Dursley's house. Oh, Aunt Marge. Oh, look. It's a lot of letters. Letters. Still try it. Thanks. Why were there so many letters in there? Do you remember in the first book when they're trying to give Harry, his letter, and all the owls keep showing up, and um, the Dursleys don't want him to go, so they keep hiding all the letters. And he's Vernon's like, Sunday's my favorite day. Do you know why? There's no post on Sunday. And uh, so Dumbledore just sent them all down the chimney, hundreds of them. They were flying all around, and Harry was trying to catch one, remember? Mom doesn't remember. Okay, so if you had a choice, Mom, would you pick a greenhouse like this or the one like we're gonna build in your backyard? What? This is not on the list. This is not on your list? It's much bigger than the one you were wanting. You wouldn't, you wouldn't give up a little, get an extra big one for some dragons on the ceiling? No? All right, we're about to go in the greenhouse. And this is where they're having their special mandrake exhibit right now, I believe. It's so pretty in here. That's pretty fun. You gonna pull a mandrake, Mom? I think mom would rather take some of these pots home. You like that watering can? 
She needs to sort out her priorities. Huh? I said you need to sort out your priorities. Alright, on to the next thing. Oh, there's Draco with one. Love these lamps. Yeah. Alright, let's go walk across the bridge and see the night bus and then we'll go inside. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, here, if you're gonna sit down, take the heavy bag. Whew. I'm a million pounds lighter. Hogwarts Bridge. Pretty cool. Jocelyn. Look at all the detail. <laughs> so uneven. You see how uneven the floor is? Definitely be careful when walking. <clears throat> Alright, so coming in off the back lot, we've got some creepy creatures. Creature shop. Oh man. All of these silicone guys. Got mandrakes. There we go. They're so creepy. It's brilliant, but they're creepy. Personality and voice, right? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. There we go. Got a sleeping Harry Potter and Dumbledore. Full scale. That is how tall he is. And there's Hermione. Oh man. Mom went to find another bench. She is a she's at the struggle bus point. Oh look at Hedwig. She doesn't want to move now. Monster book is moving. Oh, look at baby Norbert. 
Oh, there you go. Putting his head on. Yeah. Don't need to do that. Oh, Luna. With her thestrals. I love that. Luna's the best. Mom found a bench. Don't worry. We're going on a cruise after this. 21 days. Oh, look at that vast list. Today and Spain are the only two excursions I've picked. Mom has picked everything else, so she's just going to have to suffer through a little Harry Potter. Oh man, look at that. Not as big as the one in the lobby. You ready to go find the next bench, Mom? Is this the Harry Potter bench tour? a lot of goblins. <laughs> oh, look how tiny they are. Goblin costumes. Fun fact, I actually gave our groomsmen Harry Potter pocket watches for little groomsman gifts after our wedding. My husband just had to have them. He loves all pocket watches. I am sure I have his somewhere, but I don't quite know where. Oh man, look at all the models. All right, so this one. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. Oh man, this one's even bigger. Got the scale. Now here they are on their flying trolley. Oh wow, look at this. Now we've got the dome and all our destruction. It's pretty cool. I wonder how all of these scaled models work into the film production of it all, you know? They're obviously necessary for setting up new props and sound stages, but oh man, Green Gods itself. It's huge, you guys. And you look at those little models, and then you look at this, like... It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, there's some gold bars. That's okay, you were perfect. Just what I was looking for. <laughs> oh man. These feel so weird. They're definitely not, you know, not granite, not hard. Look at these chandeliers. Oh my gosh. They're ridiculously big. Creepy. All right. 
That's it, all green guts. Into the vault. Alright, I think we're getting close to the end. The labyrinth below. Okay, so now we are under. Under Gringotts. Gringotts is up here. And we've got all this stuff down here. I still cannot just believe the scale of the carts that they're sitting in. Like, they do not look that big on the movie. Of course, they look scaled to the kids. They were kids in those movies. Because the panels are so big and the paint is only five feet in here, we'll have to join it together. I know the methods can really get that to work. All the tear the paint and all the If you look at the marble paper, it creates the pattern, so we use that pattern as a bacteria. That's pretty cool. That's not how my bank works, that's for sure. So yeah, it's, it's showing how they put the columns together with vinyl. That's pretty cool. <laughs> to shoot a scene of destru destruction, they had to build a new set that designed everything destroyed with a careful combination of storytelling, research, and art. That's interesting. I wonder why you can't just destroy the set. Hmm. Mom found a bench. Oh man. Look at this. That is a lot of gold. A lot of cups. A lot of chalices. Hermione looks a little short here. Oh, excuse me. Oh, photo op, of course. So you can hold the sword. All right. After that, the exit's over here, so got to get my photo buddy. Okay. All destroyed. Well, this must be the set they set up. Everything else. Like, look at the chandeliers.
was pretty cool with all the smoke, even if it was uh, just the animation. Oh, we're getting on the Diagon Alley. I've been excited for this one. So, got the outside of Green Guts. And we've got the rest of it. Got Ollivanders, the wand shop. Apothecary. Smugs and Jiggers. Oh man. Lots of people. Oh, the Owl Emporium. Who else wishes they could have a pet owl? Just me. They're so pretty. Tell me that is not cute. Wizarding <laughs> Wizards. Oh man. Got quite the look. <laughs> Get your wardrobe. Right. More models. This would be a fun job. Creating magical worlds. Look at this. Massive. I mean, there's look at the people down there. Can you imagine how much work this took to sculpt? What are you looking at? Looking at um, the different models. Yeah, this is cool. Now, if you just put a train around the whole thing, Dad would love it. That's what I'm saying. Daddy, <laughs> Daddy does like his model trains. Did he get his train set up? Yet? Yeah, we got it set up when I visited last. I feel bad. I'll never get to see it. Cool. You look at all the greenhouses. You're telling me you wouldn't take one of those? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> what about the dome one? Would it you take it? to be in the same proportion to my house. Though. Oh, yeah, because these are bigger than your house. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You could have a little house and a big greenhouse. for a lot of the aerial shots and things, but who knows? All around the whole castle. As big as some colleges? Yeah. I think it's bigger than a lot of colleges. I mean, you have to think too, most colleges are 
four years. They were here for seven. Honestly, I'm not sure. I never knew there was a building this far away from the castle. Because the Allery is the top, the, the tallest tower, but I thought that was in the castle, but maybe it's not. the bridge said the bridge all the way across Ooh. down into the lake so the the gal who works here said it was the gallery that's over there. I knew it was one of the topper towers, the astronomy towers, the tallest in the... Oh man, look at all those stairs. I would die. I mean, they're magicians. No. Wizards. Surely they don't need to climb all those stairs. I just want this to be real life scale so I can just walk through it. Alright, I think we are pretty much at the end here. Let's see. View your photos. Don't worry, I already did that. And now I'm imagining we're coming to the gift shop because look at all the wands. It's a lot of them. Oh, cool. Thank you for visiting. Thank you for having us. <laughs> I'm sad it's over. And now the things we can buy. Dun dun dun. All right, I'm gonna look around. I've got a list of things my brother has to have. List of things I want, and then uh. I'll show you at the end what we what we end up with. They got some cool ones. All right, y'all. So obviously we are no longer at the Harry Potter Warner Brothers Studio lot. Um, we finished the tour. We had four hours, I believe. We got there at twelve thirty, and we had to be back on the bus by four thirty. And it is just huge. Like if you've seen all the footage, and I didn't even put half the footage I shot on the video for y'all. And there was plenty of things that I just didn't film because it was four hours of walking and looking at things and everything. I mean, I loved it. I think mom was not expecting it to be so much walking. I wasn't either. So she, uh, she was pretty over it at the end there, <laughs> but it was really fun. Unfortunately, by the time we got through the castle model to the gift shop, we only had about 15 minutes before we had to make our way back to the bus. So I never really got to show you too much of the gift shop or the end of the um, just walking out tour to the bus. So I figured I would let you know what we got. And um, I definitely, I definitely enjoyed it. If you're a Harry Potter fan, I definitely recommend going to the studio tour if you have the opportunity. It was amazing. I loved seeing all of the things they used in the movies and kind of the behind the scenes things like how in the boys dormitory, the Gryffindor dormitory. They <laughs> never adjusted the beds from the time they were 11 to the time when they finished filming the movies and their feet just hung off the bottom of the bed. So we ended up, <clears throat> I did get a Christmas ornament. So this is of course the golden snitch. Mom and I went, you saw a few videos ago, we walked down to King's Cross station and we went to the platform nine and three quarters store and kind of um, the actual nine and three quarters platform that they have put together 
and I got a time turner. So mom and I walked down to the actual King's Cross station where nine and three quarters, platform nine and three quarters is, and I got a golden time turner ornament there. And so I wanted to get the snitch so they would go together on one of my trees. But from there I ordered, I ordered, I bought a couple things from the gift shop. So I wanted Hermione Granger's wand. Um, and all the character wands were 32 pounds, $32. I think they were pounds. Sure. And um, so this is the one that I bought and it's Hermione's wand. You can see, I will try to get a close up for you, but it's all the leaves. It's very pretty. And they were very good at the store of um, really carefully inspecting the ones. They inspected mine, even though it was the cheaper one. And then my brother, we're going to 21 days in Europe, all kinds of different countries and history and Stonehenge. And, and his one request was Harry Potter merchandise from Warner Brothers Studio Tour. So he wanted Dumbledore's wand, but he didn't want the basic one like I got. Mine is made of resin. He wanted the wooden edition. So they had to get this out of a locked glass case. They do not put these out. And the girl inspected this baby like it was made of solid gold. And then she carried it up to the front and I had to request it once I got to the front. So he'll be happy with that because he is very anal. Everything has to be perfect. So here is his wand. You can see it has like the purple, I, I can't imagine it's silk, but silk-esque material. And then it has the actual wooden wand. They turned it around looking, looking over every single square inch to make sure that it was proper. And then the tassels are still in their protective sleeves. So I'm going to be keeping these in my carry-on because all I can imagine is putting them in my checked luggage and having them tossed about in a corner smashed on these boxes. My brother would be livid. They will be being carefully carried. <coughs> From there, my brother really wanted a scarf. He's Ravenclaw, I'm Hufflepuff. So we each got a scarf. And then the ones he wanted online, because he looked at all the things online, had a the house crest. And the ones at this, the shop right now didn't have that. But they did have these iron-on patches. So we got one for each of our scarves. And I was telling my mom, I'm excited because not only am I a Hufflepuff, but I'm a huge Steelers fan, so I can use this double duty if I'm, I'm being a Harry Potter person or a Steelers person. And then mom's been tossing the things she got onto the bed. So mom got this pack of postcards. I'll put a close up of it on here for you, but it's 20 different postcards. Come tell them what you do with these mom, because she doesn't mail them out as cards. She just wants me to tell you. So sometimes she'll frame them. Um, she does that a lot with postcards just from anywhere, not just Harry Potter. She has some frames from a lot of our other trips. And then the ones she doesn't frame, she will probably cut apart for scrapbooking. So it's an easy way to get scrapbooking material or frameable material. She then got a few ornaments. So this is just the Hogwarts crest and the sorting hat ornament. And then I'm not supposed to know about these, but she got me and my brother each a house crest ornament, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw that are going in our Christmas stockings, but I never saw these. So that was it. I really enjoyed the tour. I think if you're a Harry Potter fan, you will enjoy the tour. I think if you're not a Harry Potter fan, <laughs> it's still interesting, but there's just so much of it. So mom said, bring a good book. If you're not a Harry Potter fan, but you're able to walk a little more, then you may still enjoy it. But even for me, it was a lot of walking. So I think that is it for this excursion video. We, of course, we booked this through Viator and Evan Evans. I, we really liked Evan Evans. They did, a, they did a great job. They were where they were supposed to be. They were on time. They did a really good job of... Yeah, they had a good waiting room. They had nice coaches with the USB plugs because... Filming all this stuff, our phones kept dying. And that was the main problem is we'd get back from a tour. The Harry Potter Warehouse tour was seven hours. My phone was almost dead. Mom's phone was almost dead. 
if we couldn't have charged our phones on the coach on the way back to London, it's an hour drive, hour and a half drive from Harry Potter to London, we would have gotten back to London with dead phones. And we do pretty good at getting around, but you know, you kind of need that GPS to know exactly where to orient yourself to get home. So we, yeah, plus we wanted to take a million pictures. <laughs> so I definitely recommend them. We did Stonehenge through them as well. If you want to check out that excursion video, I'll put a link below. But for now, we are going to go wonder about the ship. So keep watching. I'm going to be uploading videos for all the other excursions we're doing throughout the 21 days we are on this ship as well as some ship videos if you're interested in cruising with Carnival. None of this is sponsored. We're just going on a trip and I'm sharing it with y'all. So see you later. Bye.